Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look at a very cool computer science book. It is called Advanced Programming, Programming and Operating Systems by Harry Katzen Jr. And it's a pretty cool book, it's really old. So let's go ahead and open it up here and see what we have. I'm gonna smell it first because, I don't know, there's something about old books. I just gotta give this one a whiff, let me just... Oh, wow, wow, just one more time. Oh, yeah, nice. Advanced compiler systems. Compiler writing techniques have received a great deal of pragmatic and academic attention and are now well-defined. Cool. Let's look at the contents. See what it contains. This book is really old. Pretty sure it's from the 70s. I think it's 1970. Advanced Programming Computer Science Series. Programming and Operating Systems. Harry Katzen Jr. Pratt Institute. Katzen. Could be like a villain in the movie. 1970 by Lytton Educational Publishing, Publishing Inc. To Margaret, Kathy, and Karen, probably his family. This book presents an introduction to advanced concepts in computer programming. The readers assume to be familiar with the field of programming and to have had experience with at least one higher level programming language, such as Fortran or Algol. He should have been exposed to an assembly language of some kind and possess a reasonable amount of mathematical maturity. I love that. However, a formal background in mathematics or science is certainly not required. All right. Oh, check this out. First year graduate course. The book is an outgrowth of a series of first. So this is a graduate level book. I thought this would be undergraduate. Yeah, and, and the reason I thought that is because, well, you'll see. I mean, it's, I don't know, it doesn't seem too bad. So here, it starts with programming systems. Okay, that's part one. So you've got like an introduction, some languages, meta programs. We're going to look at that stuff. Looks, looks cool. String manipulation, basic compiler methods. Let's turn the page here, see what else we have. Computer languages. Advanced compiler systems, decision logic tables. We should definitely look at that. Operating systems. And there's uh, some appendices. I want to go to the decision logic tables really quick, just before I forget, because that seems interesting. So let's let's take a look at that. See what that is. And then I want to look at the stuff at the beginning too. Decision logic tables. Although flowcharts are a widely accepted means of describing the logic of computer programs for both development and documentation purposes, they have several significant disadvantages which should encourage the analyst to seek alternate methods for stating the pertinent aspects of a problem. Decision logic tables provide an alternative. Okay. So here's a flowchart. Here's a flowchart, okay. Credit, okay, no. Payment record, okay, no. Special approval, no. Return to sales. Credit, okay, yes, boom. Credit, not okay, no. Payment record, okay, boom. I see, so many ways <laughs> to get approved, right? You have to fail several times in order to not get approved according to this flow chart, all right? I wonder uh, what the credit is for. And then here, credit, okay. I see a little bit different. Rule one, rule two, rule three, rule four, I see. Just a different different way. Let's let's take a look at the beginning. I'm curious to see what it was saying about meta programs and stuff. That seemed kind of kind of interesting. Yeah, if you've heard of this book, let me know. Um, I don't know if this is a uh, you know I think it is. I, I'm pretty sure I bought this book uh, really inexpensively a long time ago because someone left a comment in the channel. So I was like, oh, I'm like oh, you should get this book by Cat Sans. So I'm like, all right. So I looked it up and it was like really cheap. So I bought it. Um, so I've had it for a while. My, my first major in college was computer science, but then I, I, uh, I switched to uh, the dark side or the other side. <laughs> Mathematics. Introduction. Here we go. The essence of computer programming is the encoding of algorithms for subsequent execution on automatic computing machines. So old school, right? I mean, this is this is this is prior to the internet, right? So you have to remember that. 
The notion of an algorithm is one of the basic ideas in mathematics and has been known and used since antiquity. An algorithm is a list of instructions specifying a sequence of operations which will give the answer to any problem of a given type. And I wanted to see what it said about metaprograms. I just thought that was just a fun word. Here, meta, metaprograms, here we go. Any given algorithm may be programmed in a number of programming languages. Okay. In many cases, uh, a specific language may be appropriate for the description of a given application, but inappropriate for execution. Okay. Right. The process of translating from one language to another is of interest, therefore, particularly when it involves translation programs from source language to machine language. A computer program which operates on programs as data is termed a metaprogram. There's a star there. What's, what's, what's the star? I know, this is so interesting. A more common name is language translator, which has been adopted by several computer manufacturers and applications groups. Okay. Huh. So there's, there's, there's three main types of translators are identified. Compilers, okay. So like C is compiled. Assemblers and interpreters. A compiler accepts programs expressed in a given language. It asks the argument language and produces corresponding programs expressed in a second language. It asks the function language. An assembler is a special case of a compiler where the statements of the argument program are relatively independent. And two, the statements of the argument program are primitive in that they need not be analyzed into component statements. Pretty cool book. Operation of the assembler. Now, whenever I think of um, <laughs> assembly, I always think of Linus Torvalds or Linux, right? Because he wrote, he did the kernel, right? I mean, I think, wasn't that done? Well, I think that was done in C. Yeah, that wasn't done in assembly. I think, I think the kernel, the Linux kernel was written in C, which here's a really cool, that's like the book on C programming. That's, that's the first edition. Uh, it took me a while to get this. I bought it a while ago, so I can give it away here. Sorry, we'll come back to the operating systems book. Just, oh, the legendary K&R. Basic, I, I, I tried to, use, I did use this to learn C, by the way, but I, I had to use another book. Like, I couldn't just use, I used this, another book, which I, I need to find it. And uh, Steve Summit's FAQ on the C programming language, right website. Yeah, it's an old list of uh, FAQs from the uh, Complang uh, group. So, yeah, that that Steve Summit website and that book. And this this was a help, but yeah, it's a, it's a fun book. It's a classic. So yeah, if you know about this book, let me know. Leave a comment. Uh, it's just one of my computer science books. I have a bunch. Um, this one I bought because I'm pretty sure someone left a comment about it. They're like, oh, you have to get this book. It's a classic. Or, so I was like, oh, what's this book? You know, usually when people talk about a book, I look. <laughs> so, you know, I, I have a lot of books here, as you can see. There's a bunch here. And look, over here, there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of books, right? All kinds of books everywhere. So, yeah, and I have, yeah, there's stacks. There's stacks everywhere. Let me know what you, uh, what you know about this book. Take care.